So if you're like my buddy Jesse here, you probably have problems stopping your Mustang before it careens into a crowd leaving cars and coffee. If so, your brakes proudly look like this. Do you want them to look like this? Well, maybe you got an SN95 Mustang like this one here and you can buy aftermarket upgrades all day long. What do you do if you're like me? And you got some lesser known vehicles like my Super Coupe or my Dakota here that requires a custom big brake kit to have any upgrades at all. What if you can't buy something like this? What if you don't have access to a CNC mill or any fabrication tools whatsoever? Well, grab a cup of your favorite coffee, sit down, buckle up, and I'm gonna show you what to do. All right, well first you're obviously gonna need a pair of calipers. No, one of these kind of calipers, Jesse, not that kind of caliper. You're also gonna need a precision uh, ruler as well. And don't be afraid, you can pick these things up real cheap on Amazon or at your local Harbor Freight. So, no problem. All right, <clears throat> next you're gonna have to make a big decision about your brake kit. And that's the brake rotor here. Brake rotor is really the foundation to any brake package. So you need to really think about this. A couple notes is you need to make sure that the hub bore here is gonna match your stock wheel bearing and that you are using the same lug nut pattern. Now, I like to troll rock auto and just look at parts and compare them and just cause I'm crazy and I've always got all these ideas. Um, so I think that's the best place to, to, to look around. I recommend you look for a car, maybe that's the same manufacturer as yours. Uh, and shares the same lug nut pattern, maybe as a heavier car or a more performance oriented car that's gonna have a bigger brake package. Here for our application, I picked up this 14 inch GT500 rotor. It shares our bolt pattern. Bearings fit perfectly, no problem. All right, now once you have this sorted out, you're actually gonna need to at least buy a single rotor. You're gonna have to have this to get all the measurements you need. So buy the cheapest one you can. The dimensions are gonna be the same between all the rotors. So get one on hand that you can use for measuring and, and getting all your, your measurements. And then next up, you're gonna need to get a brake caliper. So I decided to go with this Willwood Forge Narrow Super Light four piston caliper here. Um, it's got a radial mount where the mounts come in here at the top. It gives us the most amount of adjustability uh, in making everything fit. We can shim it every which way we need to if there's any variations on the parts. Uh, and best of all, these are relatively inexpensive for, for what they are. Um, not cheap, but this is about 400 bucks. You can get a six piston version, so it's really versatile. Looks good too. Now that you got your parts in, now we gotta take some measurements. Uh, this is a really important part. Let me get this out of the way. All right. I pulled this uh, knuckle off the car so that we can just do this on the bench and see everything real nice and easy. Um, these are the mounting bolt holes for the stock calipers. So first of all, we need to figure out what the spacing of these is to one another and how far off they are from the spindle. So first we're going to measure the outside edge to the outside edge of these holes. And switch over here. We're getting 142 millimeters, right? Now to get the center to center distance from that, we're gonna measure one of the bolt holes here. Get its diameter, which is 12 millimeters. So you just subtract 12 from the 142, it's gonna give us 130 millimeters. So that's the center to center distance between these holes. What I always like to do is set the caliper to that measurement. So you can do a little bit of a visual check here. So set that to 130 millimeters. And I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it here and make sure that that looks, you know, 
like what we expected to in the center of those bolt holes and it does. So now that we got that, that gives us the key spacing for these holes, which obviously we're gonna to use to mount our new caliper. Next, we need to figure out how far away are the holes from the wheel center. Now I turned this on the lathe uh, just to have a pin that fits nice and tight into these holes to help me measure this. But you don't need this. You can put a bolt in these holes. It's plenty accurate enough. And, and like I said, with the radial caliper design, you're gonna be able to shim this up and down and, and however you need to really get it perfect. You want it as close as possible, but you can fix it with shims if anything's just a tiny bit off. So we're gonna do the same thing that we just did, except to the wheel center. So we need to figure out, basically it's like a triangle, right? We have this distance, now we need the distance for this to figure out all the relationships together. So I'm gonna to need to measure your pin. So we're 12 millimeters on the pin and the spindle is 34 and a half millimeters. And what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the outside edge of the pin to the outside edge of my dowel that I made here. And we get 100 and, let's see, 123 millimeters. And we're gonna subtract half of the spindle diameter and half of the bolt hole diameter, 12 millimeters. And what that's gonna give us is the center to center between these two points. And that comes out to actually 100 millimeters. Again, you can kind of eyeball it here, center to center. I'm gonna pull this dowel out and we're gonna do the same for the other side. Sure, go slide down. All right, 123 millimeters, so it's actually the same. This is totally symmetrical. Obviously that's the same size, that's the same size. So we're looking at, here we've got 130 millimeters between these holes and 100 millimeters from the center of each of these holes to the center of the spindle here. Pro tip, write all of this down when you're doing it. It's really important. A couple other key measurements we're gonna to need to get here is we need to get the thickness of the mounting flanges because we have to decide which side of these mounting flanges are we gonna mount our bracket onto. Is it gonna be on the inside or the outside? So we're gonna need that information as well. So it looks like in our case, this is 14 millimeters thick. The last measurement we're gonna need is you need to get the offset of the center of your rotor to the mounting flanges. That's why we measured the thickness though, because you don't know which side you're gonna use yet. Um, all right, to do that, we're gonna have to put the wheel bearing on. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to see, but what we're looking at measuring here is just the distance from our mounting hole flange to, maybe this one's easier to do, to the surface of the rotor. It looks like we're getting 22 millimeters here. And if you wanna find the distance from here to the center of the rotor, all you need to do is get the thickness of the rotor. We're about 32 millimeters, so that's 16 millimeters plus the 22 millimeters we got and you're at, what is that, uh, 38 millimeters. Now that we got all of our measurements, we're gonna take all this stuff and we're gonna go inside and we're gonna let the computer do all the hard work for us on the math. All right guys, first we're gonna to need to download a CAD application to use to do this. I like to use Autodesk Fusion for a few reasons, but mainly because anyone can use it. It's completely free for anybody to use for personal use if you can't afford to buy this. And it's really popular in, in maker circles, so there's a lot of information on it. All right, now I need to get some information about our caliper. 
Uh, I chose a Willwood caliper because they've got a huge selection, just tons of different price points. They're relatively affordable and they look really good. Uh, we want a Forge Narrow Super Light caliper here for our application. And one of the things I really like with Willwood is just how accessible all the information is on their products. Uh, every one of their calipers has a little drawing that tells you all the specs you need to mount the caliper up. All right, now that we've got all of our information, we're gonna head into Fusion 360 and start using it. Uh, to get started here, we're gonna make a sketch. I'm gonna select the top plane here and we're gonna make a point for the spindle and two bolt holes. And we're going to draw some dimensions to make all these parts uh, line up exactly like they are on the actual spindle. So it's basically a digital representation of, of what we measured. Now that we got that, we need to figure out where the caliper needs to mount. And we know from the Willwood drawings that uh, for our rotor size, it it needs to mount 141 millimeters away from the spindle and that the mounts are 152 millimeters apart. Now I'm going to go ahead and just draw in some structure here, trim up everything to make something that resembles a caliper mount. Now uh, the caliper has a recessed mounting hole so I'm going to take away 10 millimeters here and we're going to re-add it back when we make the caliper side mounts here. This is where we're gonna decide uh, which side of the mounting ears our caliper bracket's gonna mount on the knuckle. Uh, so we knew that the center of the rotor to those mounting ears is 38 millimeters. Um, the Willwood drawings say that we need to have our mounting holes at 39 millimeters. So really just one millimeter off here, not much. So this tells me that I need to mount my bracket on the outboard side of the steering knuckle, similar to the stock mount. Uh, now we're gonna make the little mounting pads for our caliper here. I know some of this might be a little bit hard to follow if you don't have a lot of CAD experience, but hopefully this isn't too crazy, but bear with me, it's worth the results in the end. Okay, so here's where we're gonna add back kind of our 10 millimeters we took away earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this body. And then we're gonna extrude the mounting pads for this to get that 10 millimeters back here. And add some structure. Uh, now we want to make it look a little bit neater here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a shape here to kind of just use to cut this, cut off a little bit of that material and make it look kind of neat and make it a little easier for machining here. So Next, we need to add some fillets here. Fillets are really important when you're designing parts like this. Um, those are those little radiuses I just made. Uh, these help a lot with you know, stress relief uh, to make sure that your part doesn't break at a hard corner. So it's important to use them. And next, we're gonna cut out some holes for our bolt holes. And that's got our brake bracket here. Pretty, pretty simple. Right, guys we're back out at the shop here and we're done with our computer work so here's what we're going to do to get this part now i personally do have access to a mill and a lathe but we're not going to use any of that to make this part so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and head on over to pcbway.com and you're going to upload that cad file and you're going to mail order you some cnc parts so that's exactly what we've done here after a couple weeks we got this in the mail so I selected some 6061 aluminum and had this made up. Now I did have to do a little bit of work myself. Uh, I tapped the holes myself. 
Uh, I didn't have them do that. You can just buy a tap, it's really easy to do. Nothing too special there. But you might notice this part's a little bit different than what you saw us do on the computer. And I'm gonna show you what problems I ran into. And really what it was is I had not accounted for the pistons sticking out here so much and, and the clearance for them. So I had to mill a little bit of material out of here to fit um, just for mock-up purposes. So you can see that it fits nice and good. There's plenty of space. Um, and I'm gonna have to change my design a little bit. This is just a prototype. So I'm gonna fix this in my final version of the bracket, but this is, this is what we've got here. Well, obviously I gotta make some design changes to my bracket before I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this sucker onto my super coupe here. But if anybody's interested in this sort of bracket, these are gonna work for your SN95 Mustangs, your MN12 Thunderbird Cougar, uh, Lincoln Mark 8 platforms as a direct bolt-on. So let us know in the comments section below if that's something that you're interested in. I made this video to, to show you guys everything that I learned along the way and really because I couldn't find a video at all like this. So, you know, if you made it this far watching this, I really appreciate you. So please like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you think. Are you like my friend Jesse here who has trouble stopping his Mustang before it careens into corrals at Cars and Coffee? Why? <laughs> I love it though. Stop laughing while I'm doing <laughs> things! I, I can't help it. Okay. You're just gonna walk away? Yes. Like a bitch? I, I, well, he's supposed to tell me if I'm in the frame, huh? If you're like my friend Jesse here, you've got problems. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Got problems like my friend Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. <laughs> Something we could do. Get, get, fucked. Get, fucked. get a good lawyer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Stop hitting clouds. Stop killing people. Yeah, stop <laughs> killing people. What the fuck? God, what is wrong with you?